He honors his fallen friends and fellow soldiers by dedicating songs and performing at their memorial services. Please welcome retired Army Specialist Joshua Revac. Joshua, good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you very much. You are from Duluth, Minnesota, your hometown. Why did you join the Army? What was it that motivated you? Um, September 11th. Um, I really decided that it was time to, to contribute in some way. I, had, I was um, out of high school for, for a year or so and, and decided that I would like to contribute to, uh, to the country. So it wasn't long before I was in basic training. Uh, September, uh, by January, I was in. So January of, of 2002. So yes. just almost immediately after September 11th. And, and what was the first time that you were shipped overseas to be in combat? 2003. It was May, I think. Um, yeah, it was just three months into the war. So yeah. we're How many tours of duty did you do all told? Two. Com um, well, the second one I was wounded. And, and uh, so one complete 15 months. We were there in 2003 through 2004. And then 2006, I went back. Like Colby, who was here just a few minutes ago, telling about his experience, seeing things that you just pray your kids don't see. You saw them. And one of the things you saw, you saw friends die. What happens to you when you see people that you've trained with, that you've lived with, and they go home before you, but they don't go home to see their families? Mm -hmm. Boy, it's a crushing experience. There, there's nothing quite like it. It definitely was the worst part of uh, my military service. It, it's very difficult to deal with seeing um, friends, you know, go before their time. You, you, you think, you know, that, that they're so young and, and uh, the majority of my friends really, truly believe through and through in what they're doing. And in a combat environment, we, we would talk about it often. A lot of guys would have in their pocket a note, you know, should they not come home, um, a, a note for their families. That they carried with them that, into battle. That they would carry with them. Yes. And they would tell you, if something happens, get this to my family? Get this to my family. and mm. and. Did you have notes that you were asked to get to family members? Uh, one day in Karpala, in the in the uh, in the heat of combat, I did a video note, and uh, and I never, you know, fortunately, I never got that back to my family because it was mm. kind of embarrassing. Where you filmed like a message back to your family? I did. I, I filmed. We had a video camera, and we were we were dismounted in. Uh, in a combat environment in Karbala in 2004, early it was the uh, the assault on um, Sadr's army, and uh, and we were dismounted, and there's a lot of bullets flying, and and so I I taped a video note. I, I we we all were concerned whether or not we would we would uh, come out of that. So what, what motivated you now? You, you started writing songs, and these were songs about the fallen comrades, the ones that you were s s out there with. What made you think of doing that? Actually, in 2003, I, I've always loved music. Um, we found out that we were going to be deployed from Germany to Iraq. And the first thing I thought about bringing was a guitar, you know. Um, I knew that, it would, that, that I would need that there and other people might benefit from that. So um, we actually kind of smuggled it, you know. In 2003, it was the bare necessities that would come with us. So um, I found room for it in a personnel carrier, and I stuck it in there. And, uh, and brought it, and by Thanksgiving, one of my friends had died, and, and we were just, we were just um, distraught. And, and so the only, the only place I knew to turn, you know, for, for uh, serenity was, was to music, and other people felt the same way. We wrote a song um, to try and help us grieve, and we were invited to play it at, the, at, at his memorial service. Um, it was Tim, Timothy Hazlett. Um, and, and we, we played at his memorial service, and people wept. Soldiers wept, which was a little bit different from memorial services in the past, um, wh where it had been more dry-eyed and more just kind of a, a very um, difficult experience, wasn't really grieved in the right way. So with music, it helped soldiers to grieve, and, uh, and, and so that was. You're going to come back after the break and, and uh, join the Little Rockers to do a song called Empty Boots. We see the pictures often when a soldier dies, the empty boots, those boots. It's a chilling thought. In, in 10 seconds or 15, tell me what that song means. Boy, to me, it, it, uh, it's a final goodbye. It's, um, it's a final goodbye to a, to a loved one, to somebody that, that we've served with. Um, it means honor, somebody that, that, it means sacrifice. I think all too often 
it's easy to forget in America, you know, what sacrifice really means and, and what people have sacrificed for our country. So honor, you know, if, if I had to sum it up in one word, it would be honor. Mm. I really honor those, those guys. Josh, I'm looking forward to uh, having you after the break. Josh is going to be joined by the Little Rockers with his tribute to one of his friends, a powerful song called Empty Boots. We'll be right back. It smells good.